Roof is the place where people don't go. Nobody goes up there. We on an inspection will call that life safety. So we actually stated that, whoop, we got a problem. So I feel bad for whoever ends up with that unit, but now you gotta find a culprit. Underneath that mattress was an odor. There was no moisture anywhere else. It was right directly underneath the window. Hey everyone, Izzy MJ from Endless RV with a special video today. We have Pierre and Laurel from Blue Ox on the run. They have an RV YouTube channel. They are also full-timers and they full-time inspect RVs. So in this video, we're gonna to talk to them about some very common problems that they find when they inspect their RVs and what you should be looking out for when you get an RV. So what is the first area that you commonly see problems both on new and used RVs? Roof. Roof is the place where people don't go. Either on the new one, I don't know what they do on new ones, but it's like nobody goes up there. On used one, it's typical. So for instance, a class C like this one, those are the kind of place you're gonna look at because even those seem, if you see space, if you see gap in this, this is ridiculous. I mean, people, you need to seal on this. The majority of problem is front cap like the new units they got those fiberglass cap and you got the roof coming up so both where they have this junction that they got to put a ceiling on top it's either gone or a lot of times it's a water-based sealant also so just the sun itself will create the oxygen the water that's in there because it's a water base will create bubble bubble gives a hole a hole gives access to water so that's the problem with roofs it's moving it's a big piece of four by for plywood, whatever the size of the roof is. And it's actually going like this in the front from the back. So nothing is holding together. So you will have issues on those. So that's one of the big problem is the water on the roof is the first problem that we always encounter. So number two is actually something that we spent a lot of time learning about in inspector school. It can be a life or death issue. And what is that? So it's called the hot skin test. So you actually check the unit for any ground. The power comes from a telephone post, an electrical outlet, and now it's given power to the system. The problem is if something was fixed in there where they put screws to get a wall or to, to fix an implement or to fix some kind of a toiletry item and they go through a wire. You don't know that, I don't know that. The way to test this, which dealers say they claim they do it, but they never did it, never. So we have a system that we use to be able to test the system. So we actually put a multimeter, voltmeter, and we ground ourselves to the ground to see if there's power coming in from that cable into your camper. Ground will want to go back to the earth. So in order to know if there is a ground problem with your unit, we're gonna have a reading on that power being connected and coming back to the ground. So that gives us a reading. I'm gonna hop in. So what can happen if you have a charge there, what can happen to people? Say they go to open the RV. You can pass out. We've seen that video of that little girl that is actually grabbing the handle on a travel trailer. And gets shocked. And she touched the ground, passed out, didn't know why. Right. And that's how they finally realized that, whoa. So with that reading, it, had, it actually tells us if you are grounded, meaning if, if you're barefoot or if you're, I don't know, you got flip-flops or whatever, you're insulated. If you don't have flip-flops and you grab your handle, right. then it's grounded. You get the charge. You turn into yep. barbecue, so charcoal. So what, what is the, uh, I guess, the maximum reading that you can get before so you know there's a problem? We don't determine where your safety states. We state after five volts, going through your skin can pierce your skin. Five volts, well-grounded, it can actually shock you to the point where it's gonna pierce your skin. So fire hazard you're gonna get hurt so we on an inspection will call that what we call a life safety so we actually stated that whoop we got a problem and Laurel can vouch to this we have let's say 40% of units that will have up to 11 we saw 11.2 volts on, on a unit. So I feel bad for whoever ends up with that unit, but now you gotta find a culprit. So you can have the problem at the pedestal. So that's why you need a EMS. You actually have to have something that tempers that power because you can have a ground fault, which would be a wrong reading on the, the hot skin itself. So it's all those little things that with our knowledge, with our experience, I even don't even use the ground of an electrical outlet now. I actually use a screwdriver that I put directly in the earth where it it's wet, so now I have a real ground. So it's emphasizing how many voltage I can get on that. So to answer your question, one to three volts, it's fine. At four volts, we actually mention it and it becomes life safety.
So the next one is a really important one regarding propane. Many RVs are equipped with propane. What is the test that you run? It's called a propane leak test. So we actually use a manometer. I'm gonna spare you with the eight water column and all of that jargon thing. So we basically isolate the system. So from this, we actually put pressure so we'll either go in the in the gas top or we'll go in one of those spigot that you plug your grill into we're going to charge the system we're going to shut off the system so now you got pressure in all the system everywhere in the stove and your heater and everything and if you don't run nothing in there now we got two separate systems this one that doesn't leak and now we got to test if this one that goes to your house leaks and that's where we get a reading within seven minutes five minutes what we have we have a reading we prove our reading that it did hold the test so you don't have any propane leak in your system. If you do, as minimal as it could be, I sometimes I, I redid it about four times just to convince myself that it is doing this and I also have two manometers that I will check the pressure to make sure that your life is not on the line. Now, when you do these tests, how often do you find a leak on the propane system? I would say probably 50% of the time we find a propane leak. And now is this on new units, used units, or it doesn't matter? We've had both. I think we have more on new units than we have on old units. We have a lot of new units, yeah. but it's been on both for sure. But those new units don't think that because it's new that you're not going to have an issue. It is scary because all the guys out there that think that they know it all, and they think they can build a house and figure everything and have fish in the pond and that's the problem when you don't know what you're looking for and you don't have the right tools to do what you're doing well leave it to people who actually do this for a living propane is dangerous if you don't know what you're talking about don't try to wing it and just say that oh yeah i'm buying it because i'm loving it there might be a problem and your life might be at stake All right, so I'm inside with Laurel. Now, when you do the inspections, usually Pierre does the outside, you do the inside, you show them on all your videos. So inside, what are some common issues that you find? Some of the first things that we do, we do the slides. We bring them, bring them in and out. And when we're doing that, I'm looking to make sure the slides are coming in evenly, making sure that I don't hear any strange noises. When I do, we stop, start the inspection again, go through. He's on the outside looking for the things that I'm seeing that's going wrong on the inside, which we've had several recently that have been coming in sideways. One of the first First things that I look for as far as moisture, I go right to where my slides are. I like to go inside the cabinets and I can feel deep inside. If I have my step stool, I could show you and I'll go up into the ceiling and I can use my moisture meter up there to detect if there's any issues. Sometimes you don't see it with just your eye. You need to have that moisture meter and you need to feel. And a lot of times you're not going to even feel the moisture on your fingers. The other thing I do, I go through all of the water systems. So I will check all of the, the sinks in the shower and a lot of times we get a lot of leaks that are underneath the sinks but also the showers people don't realize that I'm actually getting in there I am shutting the shower doors I'm making sure that nothing's going to leak and you cannot make it leak that is a false myth right there another thing that we have found sometimes the wiring is going underneath your bunks and that has caused a lot of issues in several units that we have inspected that has had bunks so something else that's really important is let's talk about mold so not only is it bad for your RV but it's bad for your health. But I'm just gonna show you this for example. Recently, we were inspecting a Class C and I lifted this mattress. Oops, well look at this. Hmm, a little screw, wonder where that came from. Kinda but underneath, <laughs> <laughs> underneath that mattress was an odor and there was this spot just right here. There was no moisture anywhere else but there was definitely moisture and it was right directly underneath the window. So those are the types of things that we look for. And even though I can't tell you that it was mold, I can tell you it smelled like it and may have looked like it, but I can't actually state that it is mold. Well, that was a lot of useful information, maybe an eye opener for many. If somebody's looking to follow you on YouTube where you do inspections all the time, or they want to get their RV inspected either to sell, because that's a really good idea, or if they're going to buy an RV, tell our subscribers how to keep in touch, get in touch with you. You can get in touch with us by going to our YouTube channel, Blue Ox On The Run, and also our website, www.blueoxrvinspection.com. And remember, and do never forget, it's not about the destination. It's all about the journey.